Hello, everyone. Welcome to an APH Virtual Excel Academy. We are so excited to have you with us today. Feel free to say hi in the chat. We welcome all of our friends that come and join us. We are so lucky to have you with us today. Today is the three no's of communication. And when I say no, I am talking about the K-N-O-W knows the three knows of communication welcome welcome we are glad to have you with us here at the APH virtual excel academy this is our session for our little bit older students everybody is welcome though this is the three knows of communication so get your thinking caps on turn your chat on so we can say hi hi Donnie glad to have you with us Today, our instructor is Karina Lopez. Karina, how are you? Doing great, thanks. How are you? I am doing good. I am going to turn these students over to you. Fantastic. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining me today. So, as you already know, today we're going to be talking about the three no's of communication. And as has already been said, no, as in knowledge, positive knowledge for clear communication. All righty, let's jump into it. I'm glad to have people live with me and I'm really glad to have everyone who is studying remotely and recorded. Um, we're going to have a series of Q and A's as we go through. So have your pen or pencil ready or your fingers ready to type in the chat. Okay, the three no's of communication. Why are we studying this? So you can be confident in your conversations with anyone, anytime, anywhere. Now, let me ask you a question. You don't have to respond out loud or in chat, but just consider. Do you know everything you need to know about communication? Give it a second. Let's find out. Pop quiz! What is the point of communication? Have you ever considered that? Have you ever asked yourself, why am I communicating with someone? Let's find out what you know about communication. A, is the point of communication to gather or exchange information from people around us? B, is it to create a safe and fair society? C, is it to connect with others? Or is the point of communication D, all of the above? What do you think? Are we going to, I'm going to repeat for those of us who are watching uh, a recorded session. Is the point of communication to A, gather or exchange information from people around us? B, create a safe and fair society? C, connect with others, or D, all of the above. I'm going to pause our um, presentation at the moment. I'm gonna check in the chats really quick to see if anyone was brave and willing to put an answer. Okay. Zachary says C. Donnie says the point of communication is A. What do you at home think? Let's check it out. Let's move on. The answer to that question, what is the point of communication is D, all of the above and more as we will discover. 
First of all, I want to discuss what is happening on the screen that we are looking at right now. There is an image of a mother sitting with her very young children, a toddler and a baby, looking at an iPad. The mother is communicating with her children, not just verbally, but also physically. She is holding them. She is hugging them. Physical touch is a type of communication. It is physical connection. The baby might be babbling. The toddler who looks to be about two years old might be saying silly sounds or words or attempting to say words as we speak them now. So the babies are communicating with their mother in attempts to mimic her language. They are looking at a screen. I don't know if they are watching a video. Maybe they're listening to music and there is nothing to see, but there is plenty to hear. So they are gathering audio or visual information. That's going to help them release emotions or give them some knowledge that they need. Perhaps it's a song about the ABCs or counting one, two, three. So this image gives us many perspectives of communication. We communicate in order to share vital information and knowledge. Vital means important. If you were cooking in the kitchen and you step away from a hot stove and let's say your mother comes along and is dangerously close to the stove, you would say, mom, stop, the stove is hot, right? That is important information that she needs immediately. We communicate in order to create a safe and structured society. The reason there are stoplights when people are driving is so that we don't crash into each other. Those stoplights are forms of communication. The reason we have um, ambulances have those big loud sirens or fire trucks have big loud sirens is so that we can hear them coming and are off the road so that they can barrel through it. We are kept safe and they are going to their destination. Another reason we communicate is just to share our experiences or our knowledge. All of us in this session right now, we are communicating. I am sharing some of my knowledge set and you are providing me with your insights. Sometimes sharing can be laughter. Type in the chat if you like laughter. Ch type Y for yes, N for no. I'm going to pause and check. The question I asked was, do you enjoy laughing? Y for yes. N for no. Monica says she loves to laugh. Donnie also likes to laugh. Zach says yes, with his friends and family. So we got even added communication from Zach. He got specific on the environment that he likes to ask. Thank you everyone for your input, for communicating with me. I'm going to return back to our presentation. All right. Whoops, clicked on the wrong screen. Give me a second guys. Thank you. Okay. So now that we know what communication is and why we communicate, I have something for you to consider. Is all communication created equal? I'm giving you a cheat sheet. I put the answer right below it. 
And the answer is a straight up no. Not all communication is created equal. In the examples I gave, some were more urgent than others. A fire truck coming down the road is loud and therefore will take precedence over perhaps the conversation that you're having with your friend at that very moment. So we have urgent communication. We have a silly communication. We have informational exchange communication. When you are going to the grocery store, when you go to the grocery store, for instance, and you are buying, um, let's say soda, ice cream and a sandwich for lunch, the, the clerk might ask, are you paying with credit card or cash? And all you have to say is, I'm paying with cash, right? You're not going to start a big life story with the clerk. It was just a business transaction. But that might be different if you were talking with let's say your best friend or your grandparent with you whom you have a close uh, relationship. But we'll get more into that a little later on. Because not all communication is created equal, there are different, let's say, rules of talking with one another. There are also different formats of talking with each other. So I want to repeat that. There are different rules or social norms of talking with each other, depending on who we're talking with and when and why. And there are different platforms of talking with each other. And sometimes those platforms and rules match. And sometimes we have to do a little finagling, if you will. And we'll get into that in a minute. That's where the three no's come in. Ready? We're moving on. Here are the three no's of communication. Number one, know your audience. Super important, know your audience. Number two, know your message. Know what you're going to say, know your message. Number three, know your boundaries, know your limits. And we're going to explain what each of those mean as we move on in the presentation. But before we go forward with that, I want to ask those of you that are live with me right now to consider what it means when I say the word audience. For the recorded viewers, please think about it. When I say audience, what comes to mind? For those of you who are live with me, if you feel you have a strong understanding of what audience means, I want you to type Y for yes in the chat. If you're a little unsure, a little shaky, type N for no. So my question is, do you feel strong that you know what the word audience means? Type Y for yes. If you are unsure, type N for no. For those who are watching post this presentation in the recorded session, please consider what audience might mean to you. I'm gonna stop the share and look at the chat. Okay. Donnie feels he knows what an audience is. And he also is asking an excellent question. What's an insight? Insight means your ability to perceive or understand what is going on in a situation. Zach says an audience is people sitting down in a group. So maybe as if you went to a music concert you're sitting down in a theater or you're sitting down on the blanket in the lawn listening to the music concert. Okay, really great um, suggestions. So I'm gonna go back 
to our share screen here. Let me see. Can you see? Not yet. Not yet. I don't know why that's happening. All right, everyone, be patient. We're going to have to do some back end work here. Hold on a minute. Okay, let me lower this. Let's get this going. And I don't know why this is having a glitch. Please bear with me. Well, I'm trying to figure this out. I want you to think of the times that you have been in the audience when you have been receiving information. Consider what you liked about being an audience member and what you did not. And we shall get back on track in two seconds, I hope. No worries at all, you work on that. <laughs> Donnie did say, you can't have an audience with COVID. And you're right, there are some restrictions on how many people might be able to sit down in a group. But I wonder, maybe some of your audience, when you're communicating, might only be one person, or two, or virtual. Like right now, we're communicating, but the audience is only one or two, and we're all in our own safe place. Hmm. Did you lose your presentation? No, um, my screen isn't allowing me to make this big and also share. It decided to stop cooperating. <laughs> <laughs> Technology is not always our friend. We know that. No, no. But it's it, it, working now almost. We can see you building it and we can see the group chat right now. Yes, we can. Um, let me see what it's going to do now if I go into all right can we see it now no we can't leanne i'm gonna just click pause until she's ready to make that it easier good. awesome thank you hi everyone sorry about those that little technical difficulty i just want to recap we talked about why communication is important and now we're looking into audience the first of the three no's, know your audience. We had some responses that audience is people sitting in a big group. And with COVID, we don't have audiences anymore. That is one type of audience, theater audiences, whether they be big or small. But audience really just means, and I want you to pay attention to this, the definition of audience is the person or people you are communicating to and with, either by talking, writing, signing, drawing, hugging, high-fiving, dancing, playing music, you're getting the picture. So audience is nothing more than the person or people receiving your communication. And I guess if we really wanted to uh, get into the nitty gritty, doesn't even have to be people. I give commands to the dog and the cat all the time. Cat doesn't always listen, but you know what I'm saying. Why is it important to know our audience? Let's consider this. Why do we need to know our audience when we're talking? Hmm. Why would that be important? One big reason that knowing your audience is important is because by knowing your audience's needs or interests, you can better express yourself knowing why they are interacting with you 
and how they like to communicate will help you deliver a stronger message with clarity and confidence. So you know you're an audience because one, you can better express yourself. You can better share what you're feeling and what you mean if you know what they're interested in, if you know what they need. And two, knowing why are they interacting with you will help you uh, deliver with more clarity what it is you want to say. And three, knowing how they like to communicate with you or how they need to communicate with you will also help you. For instance, this session is technologically done. Knowing that I have people live on the internet interacting with me and because of internet capabilities of recording people afterwards, days from now, will be interacting with my words, with my message, I am able to create a presentation with confidence and clarity. So moving on, I'm going to check the chats really quick. Um, nope, my computer won't let me do that now either. Okay, moving on. Questions to ask yourself. Why are we interacting? What is the purpose of our communication? So these questions that I'm going to be reading aloud to you are questions only to ask yourself before you begin talking with anyone. These questions don't just mean presentation when you're going to give a presentation. It means when you're gonna talk with a neighbor, when you're going to answer the phone in your house, when you're going to give, get ready to meet with a potential employer or school director, anybody you plan to talk to in whatever way that day, these are questions that will help you. One, why are we interacting? Why are we talking to each other, right? Or what is the purpose of our communication? Maybe you ordered something on Amazon and the wrong order came in or the wrong size. You need to call Amazon and get that fixed. That is the purpose of why you're reaching out to the Amazon representative. Three, what is our relationship? Are we family? Are we friends? Are we neighbors? Are we teacher student? Are we peers? Are we... Uh, at a business transaction, what is our relationship? Lastly, how are we communicating with each other? Is the first contact second, third, always? Is it in person? Is it over the phone? Is it over social media, email, text, carrier pigeon, right? There are so many ways that we communicate with each other. And in this tech world, there are usually multiple ways uh, in layering that communication. Moving on. The answer to each of those questions will help you decide the following. So again, the answer to each of these questions will help you decide the following. They will help you decide the type of language used. Language is important. We normally don't wanna be talking with people and swearing at them or cursing at them the first time we meet them. That's where our mind goes when we think language, watch your language. But we have to watch our language in every way with if we know who our audience is. If you are meeting, let's say, your boss for the first time, you're not going to talk to them and say, what up? That would not be appropriate. 
That would be appropriate with your friend or maybe a family member. You would use more appropriate language when talking with the boss or a teacher. You might say, hello, how are you? How are you doing this afternoon? Do we see that difference? By knowing who we're talking to, we know the type of language we can use. By knowing who we're talking to, it helps us organize our message. Let's use the grocery store example again. You're buying your bananas and your water. The clerk asks, will that be all? You will not go, well, hopefully you will realize who you're talking to and the setting you're in and you will keep the message short and sweet. Yes, thank you. You're just answering the, qu the direct question with a direct answer. Chances are you will not ask, answer, oh, I did want bananas and I did want plums and I was looking for the tortellini. The clerk doesn't need to know that because that's not what the clerk asked. That goes into the other point, how information will be shared, how much and which platform face-to-face, -face, over text, this audience, what is the best way to share that information, right? Through social media, through interpretive dance, by knowing what their needs are, you'll know how best to share the message you want to say. And lastly, by knowing your audience, you'll know relationship boundaries. That kind of ties in with language and organization. If, is this a peer member? A peer means someone your age or in the same activity that you're doing. Is this a teacher? Is this a parent? Is this an ecclesiastical leader? Is this a two-year-old that doesn't really know much of the world? And so you need to be the leader for that younger child. Or maybe you're a leader in general with people who are doing something they've never done before, but that you have experience in. All of this goes into knowing your message. I want us to stop a second and consider what does the word message mean to you? Take a second. What does the word message mean to you? We often hear uh, lately because again of internet and technology, text messaging or social media messaging, right? We, we think of it only in the text realm, but, or the tech realm, but message means just like audience, far broader term than what we have been conditioned to think that it is. Synonyms for message, again, a synonym is a word that might be spelled differently that means the same thing. So you might come across synonyms for message. And those, a few of those would be main idea, the point, the key or central idea, the focus. Okay, so really it's the crux, the, the, the big thing that you want to say or the big thing that is being discussed or needs to be discussed. You can discover and strengthen your message by asking yourself this one question. Are you ready? It's a good one. You already know your audience, you know what they need and you know how they like to be spoken to. Let's figure out how we can bring our communication confidence up a notch with this one question. If I only had 10 seconds to say something to this person, what would it be and why? Again, if I only had 10 seconds to say something to this person, what would it be and why? 10 seconds is not a lot of time, but it forces you to get to the main idea and only deliver the main idea. 
Now in real life, we have more than 10 seconds to talk. But what that 10 second rule, and it can, you could play with it. It could be 20 seconds. It can be 15 seconds. It can be 30 seconds. It could even go all the way up to one minute. But what that number rule does is it helps you get to the big point of what you want to say and organize it, structure it, and deliver it clearly and with efficiency. So here's a little math equation. If you know your audience, add that to the message. Here's what you will get. The who, how, and why you are interacting with someone will help you zone in on what to say and how to say it. I'm gonna repeat that because there's a lot in there. The who, how, and why you are interacting or communicating with someone will help you zone in on what to say and how to say it. Let's practice some examples together. All right, one, your dad has gone to the grocery store and he forgot the list. Who do we need to talk to? Let's think about it. Your dad has gone to the grocery store and he forgot the list. Who's our subject of this sentence? Who are we talking to? We're talking to dad. Hopefully we have a good relationship with dad, a decent relationship with dad. So we know he's going to the store, but forgot the list. What does dad need to know? I'm going to call him up and say, hey dad, right? Because we have a close relationship, I can use the word, hey. I don't have to say, hello, father, unless that's the relationship that you like to have with your dad and that he likes to have with you. But I can be informal with my dad. Hey, dad, just wanted to let you know you forgot the grocery list. Would you like to come back home and pick it up? Or would you like someone to text it back to you or voice message it to you, right? We knew what he needed. We knew who we were talking to. We were able to get it out there. Let's try something different. You are a new scenario. You are applying for a summer study abroad opportunity. And you are interviewing with the director of the other school. So let's think. You are applying for a summer study abroad opportunity and you are interviewing with the director of the other school. <sighs> Who are you talking to? The director of the school. Because you are talking with someone you've never met and in a position of, you know, power in this case, because they will decide if you are a good selection for their school program you're going to use academic language, language that is respectful and kind, right? I mean, we always use kind language no matter who we're talking to, but we're gonna be especially sure of our manners and polite words in this case. What could the director be interested in knowing about you? Well, Let's think of our setting. You are the one applying for a summer study abroad opportunity. And they are director of a school. Perhaps you will talk about your grades. You will also want to talk about why you're choosing this program over other programs, right? So it's an information exchange that you want to be doing in this conversation and you're gonna focus on the whys, the why you're a good student for them, and why this program is exciting to you. That would be your main key message. Okay, moving on. 
The third and final no. So we've discussed one, know your audience. Two, know your message. And now we're at three, know your boundaries. Boundaries, when we think of boundaries, sometimes we think of limitations, where to stop. In communication, that is true, but it actually offers positive um, capabilities. <clears throat> Excuse me, I had to cough. Excuse me. Let's look over a definition of boundaries as it's useful to communication. Boundaries help keep everyone feeling respected and comfortable. They establish communication patterns and expectations. I'm going to repeat that because it is important. Boundaries help keep everyone feeling respected and comfortable. Boundaries establish communication patterns and expectations. What does that really mean? Okay. Well, we understand when we talk with people and when people talk to us, we would like respect to be there. That can mean language. That can mean um, the how, the platform that we're using, right? We know that we wanna be comfortable when we're talking with people, right? You don't wanna feel like you're being judged or that you are judging someone else. Because remember, we're going back to our original definition of communication, the ability to share and increase knowledge. That's part of communication. So you wanna be comfortable when you're sharing and increasing knowledge. We know that boundaries establish patterns or expectations. Okay, we're gonna go back to the fire truck example. When the firefighter turns on the siren, they're expecting cars to move to the side and people to stay on the sidewalk. When they turn on the sirens, that is not the time for you to walk across the street. So that's a big example of a communication expectation or a boundary, right? Here are some boundaries to consider. They are not all the boundaries, but they are main ones that pop up. Number one, you might, you do create boundaries in communication to maintain a certain relationship. Some examples would be the teacher student relationship, right? Students raise their hand to be called upon that respects the teacher and the other students. So everyone has a say. Uh, server patron relationship. You go out to eat one day again when COVID is over with your family. The server comes over and politely asks if you would like a drink. This is not the time for the server to be asking you personal questions like, what is your favorite thing to do on a weekend, right? That would be a little odd. The server needs to focus in on the what is the most important message to be conveyed at that moment in this setting with this audience. And that would be, what do you want to drink? Because the audience are people eating in a restaurant in a restaurant. Uh, another relationship example, parent-child the words that are used back and forth, each family decides on that, but the decisions that are made in the language and other ways of communication tend to stay and follow a pattern within that family. Okay, here's another example of boundaries in communication, reserved versus open. When I say reserved, I mean someone it could be shy. It could also just mean knowing when to speak. Knowing when to speak is very important. And that comes from knowing who your audience is and where you are. What is the setting? You don't always have to say something. And open means 
it's a it's a time and place to share whatever you'd like. So here's an example. It's appropriate to share your deepest, darkest secret with your best friend. It is not, I repeat, it is not appropriate to share the deepest, darkest secret with the pest control agent who's coming to spray for ants. Again, we're knowing our audience, right? So there is a boundary there. All right, other boundaries to consider. Cultural boundaries. Different cultures have various social expectations. Okay, so different cultures have many different cultural expectations or they can be different from my or your cultural expectations. Uh, there are some countries in the Middle East, right, where a man and a woman, if they are not family members, cannot touch each other. Yet in France, before COVID, even if you just met, kiss on the cheek three times is customary. Neither is wrong. It is just the cultural customs and rules of communication that each culture has decided is okay for itself. If you are unsure about a certain cultural expectation, ask. You don't have all the information in the world. Nobody does. That is knowing your boundary, your limitation. Ask, you will get more information. People love sharing and you will grow. The last boundary that I'm going to talk about today is message knowledge. And it's going into what I just spoke about, message knowledge. It really is okay if you don't have all the answers. The important thing is to be a strong listener. Go and do research whenever possible and ask plenty of questions. Just when you ask those questions, again, remember, know your audience. Who are you talking to? So you know the language to use and the time to ask. And B, what is that important question that you want to ask? Know your message. So let's go through that again. Be a strong listener. You cannot be a good communicator. You cannot know your audience unless you are willing to listen to them. Research, that's the know your message part. And then ask questions. Because really the third no of communication, know your boundaries, is really about pushing through boundaries. It's about expanding and learning and growing. And that's what communication is all about. Today or tomorrow or sometime in the next week, Try to put these three no's into practice. Focus one day at a time on each one and then build upon them. Know your audience, know your message, and know your boundaries. Thank you so much, and I hope you all have a great day. Thank you so much, Karina. This has been fabulous. Lovely to see how different people have to think about who they're talking to and what they're saying. We look forward to having you visit us again in the near future. And those of you that are joining us tomorrow, tomorrow's session is in Spanish. So I will not say this well, but I'll try to say it as best I can. Aprendido, aprendendo. We could ask um, Corina to almost say it oh. for us if you copy and paste it and put it in the chat. Okay. Or we can have fun watching you try to say it, Leanne. That's let just not fair. <laughs> I can't. Let me see. Let me see. If it's in the chat, I can say I it. Just right put now. it there for you. Okay. Aprendiendo. Aprendiendo sobre las tiendas de la comunidad. Well, that's Gracias. exactly what you just said, Leanne. That's exactly oh, yes. it. That is just what I just said. Otherwise, thank you so much. It has been great, and we will be back again tomorrow. Bye, everyone.